Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Commodities Report. Uh, just before we start, um, as you may know, we've we've got a new analyst um, doing the commodities. Uh, his name is Sammy, and uh, he'll be doing the commodities and he's doing charts for uh, these commodities here, cocoa, coffee, copper, corn, uh, gold. <clears throat> I'll still do this particular video as well. Um, and this just gives a bit more insight onto um, other um other commodities uh here for uh for, you know for for all of these so he'll do the four hour charts and uh and and uh daily charts for this updated uh each day um and once he sort of settles in a little bit then we'll look at some trade recommendations through the portfolio and all of those sorts of things so <clears throat> um okay so bitcoin um uh I'll just quickly go over what we've been sort of talking about uh, here. So the good news is, is that now that we've made another high here above this high here, it takes away the idea of this being an A wave, a B wave and a C wave top here and then we come into a bearish market. That basically disappears at this particular point. The, it could still be there in a very sort of basic way. We could put this as one, two here and three, four, five. It's a possibility, but that doesn't really sort of add up when I look at some of the other crypto markets. Okay. So the good news is, is that it's highly likely that we're in a bigger bullish picture at the moment. And obviously, um, the narrative, um, with the inflows, uh, from, uh, the, uh, the ETFs, they're churning up more than the miners are pouring out. So that supply is really going to, uh, tighten up and, uh, we'll be in a bullish market. So, but just in Elliott wave terms, it's, um, appearing that, uh, we can't look at this as an ABC pattern here anymore. Um, we had it as a back, you know, I mean, we got to kind of be practical and move forward. And uh, the next step is that we can view this as one and two and three, four and five up here. Now, the problem with that is the wave three here was a little bit shorter than wave one and we drew it over here. So this wave three is a little bit shorter than wave one. So that would mean that wave five here would need to be shorter than wave three here. So the wave one's the longest, then wave three and then wave five a bit shorter because wave three can't be the shortest in, in an impulse wave. So it's possible that we've got this pattern here where we have one, two, three, four, five as one, two, three, four, five and coming into the old highs over here. I've got that at 65. That's a trading levels thing. And uh, yeah, so we could have wave five shorter and then a pullback at that point. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is not to look at this as wave three here, but to look at it as wave one and two. And I've always liked this here because it kind of reminds me what I'm going through with the AI stocks and the NASDAQ and those sorts of things. We know there's a correlation between the the, the NASDAQ and uh, and Bitcoin. I mean, they're kind of still view, being viewed as technology stocks. And, you know, I mean, folks with laser eyes, you know, beg to differ and all the rest of it and so on. But um, in the broader scope of things, we need to be a little bit practical. Um, so yeah, one and two here. And then this little wave that we're moving up here with, we're going to investigate in a moment. We'll need to look at that as a little wave one and pull back for wave two here. So when we get to this wave two here, we could get three, four, five up here to the previous highs up here. We'll get sold off here anyway, you know, but um, it could be that, um, that we, this, this wave here could take us all the way to the 65 or 69 or 70 or something. And then put, so it could get quite strong here. So I've got this pulling back as I always take the conservative view. So looking up here as wave five of one and coming back for an ABC for two. That's one possible possibility. The other possibility is that we have this as one and two here. I should put that really on top there. <coughs> And then we can look at this as being wave one and two coming back here, being sold off at the top. Because it's quite common for, you know, the market to push up and then come back and sit on the top. So this will be hitting the 69.70, the old highs over there, come back and then push off again. You know, that would be, that would be a strong uh, version of that. So, but in the meantime, we've got this little five waves that we're moving, we're counting 
moving up through here. I'm on the weekly chart at the moment, so it's a bit difficult to see, but we're going to cut into the intraday and have a look at that and see where we're up to at that point. But yeah, once that five waves is finished, then we'll be pulling back here and then going up again at that point. So we're going to go to the intraday and I'm as you know, I use ticks, so I'm going to go into 5,000 ticks. And from this low here, we're counting those five waves up that we we're just talking about. So <clears throat> we had one, two, three, four, five, and then a little ABC here. And then I've got one and two here, and one and two, and one and two. And I've got this as wave three, four, five here for three, four, and five, and yada, yada, yada. So we've got this wave three here and wave four here and then wave five to the upside. So when we're not there yet. Now I could quite easily have this little count wrong in here where we should be actually viewing this as this wave four here. So I'm not going to worry about it just at the moment. It's because I still see that we need to push up here and we need to do all of this. We need to do a little classic trading levels pattern across that um, that uh, major trading level five. So we'll be looking at this here, then an ABC and then up again over here. So that's that's how that will play out. Um, but I was looking at the that little five waves up there. I was looking at it on the crypto index, which there's many crypto indexes, of course, but this one's the top 10. Um, so from the low again, one, two, three, four, five, and one and one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and in this case here i've got one two three four five for three four five for third fourth so you see how i've got the green little green dude here i'm uh, not at the blue one yet so on the bitcoin one we're on the blue one so i don't th i think there's a good case that we can this way four may get a bit more complicated as well so don't hold me to that but would be looking at something like this here for this <clears throat> and then up at that point so it's slightly slightly different this um, i think i've got a bit more faith in this green one here because i know that uh, um i know that this needs a, needs another little look at so it's quite possible i'm just pointing out that and i'm not that fussed about it because i'll see it at the end of the day anyway that that could be the green wave one there but we don't worry about it we want we if we're going to add to positions here um we've got some positions open in the um on the trend side um, of the market for this. So just in the crypto portfolio uh, here, um, so we've got these few open ones. I know that I've got some um, in, in the trade section too, we've got Bitcoin in there. So these ones here, we'll look to add to those positions. Um, once this plays out here, we've got this ABC here, we'll look to build in over here. So I won't, we don't need to enter in up, up here. We'll just allow that to uh, top and turn and we'll pick it up at that point. So really that's where the crypto thing is at this point. Um, yeah, so um, no big deal. So we'll go over to the um, to the other side of the world and that is the other side of the world is the the dollar, the bonds and the yields. So obviously we've got those CPI uh, figures coming through and surprising uh, feds and so forth on that. Um, however, this is the dollar here. So I just want to talk about, I'll just talk about the bigger picture for the dollar and then we'll tie the, the bonds and the yields in. And then once we've tied the, these guys in, these three here, then obviously gold, you know, um, we'll is on track to be pushing lower at that point and the base metals a little bit differently and also our new analyst is covering all of all of these anyway not covering the the dollar um but uh, our forex man malik covers that as well so that's there um so this is the dollar going back over here for this and uh we could look at this as one and two and three and four and five up here so a large impulse wave and the bottom line here really is that we're looking at um, an ABC pattern here for wave two. And this would be, we either we either go a little bit higher up here to the 78.6 point and, and then come down, or we go um, this length here, we basically go a little bit higher up here to those highs up there, and then we come down here and then we go up here. So, um, so a stronger dollar, <clears throat> and uh, so that would be the US dollar milkshake theory, the cleanest dirty shirt, so to speak, and um, against other currencies and so on. Um, but you know, and I kind of like this too because the vol. I won't go into it and bore you to death, but basically the volume here, uh, the the volume uh, here uh, against the price action in that sort of relationship is telling me that 
this is, you know, when I see a market come down on lower volume, it's telling me that there's no sellers there. You know, that's what it's doing. So it's telling me that this is not a bearish thing. This is a corrective thing here. The tricky thing is the B wave. So in Elliott Wave, the B waves and wave fours can get a bit complicated and it's like a bit of a guessing game. So uh, that's always a little bit tricky. So we could put the B wave here or we could put the B wave uh, on this higher one over here. So this would be the A, the B and the C wave over here for the B and then come down and then go up, you know. <coughs> So we need to talk about this little bit moving here and then we can line the dollar up with the yields as well because that's also important as well. So actually while we're here, um, if we have a look at the have a look at the yields here just for a moment. So while the this this is the yields here, sorry about all the trading levels waffle here, but basically one, two here and one, two, three, four, five to the third, fourth and fifth. So we've been through all of that. We're doing that for, for eons. Um, and then once we got to the top here, we're looking for an A wave, a B wave and a C wave to, to come down here. So somewhere over here. So in a nutshell, this is the same as what the dollar is doing. So we're looking for this B wave here and then down to the C wave here. So coming back to the dollar here, we're looking for some move up and then some move down here. Now, I just don't know, do we come to the 78.6 relationship here and then down or do we finish this B wave up here and then come down? So they're both open at the moment, but you can see the relationship in, in these and you can match other markets up against this. So while this is pushing up here, crude oil will be pushing up, gold will be pushing down, all of those sorts of things. So we've got the the TLTs uh, um, uh, here. Uh, let's, uh, sorry, I'll just stay with this, stay on the page here for a second. So um, the yeah, so this here. So so this one here is really quite sort of simple, really. So if we look at this on the daily chart here for a moment, so we've got the A wave down here and um, <clears throat> uh, we've got this here in three waves here, which is telling me that I could get five waves out of here. If I took that little top there as a truncated fifth wave as one, two, three, four, five. But the thing is, is that it is truncated. And so it's kind of giving me three waves to there. So what three waves mean is, is that it's telling me that whatever this move is here, it's corrective and we will make new lows below here. That's what it's suggesting to me. And then this here will be the A, the B and the C wave down here for the B wave. And then the C wave up here. Now, I, c I haven't had a close look in here. We could look at this, all this is one, two, then one, two, three, four, five, four and five up here. Or I'll have a close look at this later as one, two, three, four here, then one, two, three, four, five and finishing just here. So that's, um, and that, that will be the difference with the, with the dollar. Uh, as the, the dollar index as well. So if I can just come here back to the dollar again, I uh, just on the daily chart while we're here. So the thing here is that we've got the A wave here, um, <clears throat> which I should actually just lift up a degree, but that's okay. Um, so the A wave here, and I'll need to lift this one up here then. So that's um, a bit of a lazy waiver really. Um, so a bit like Picasso, he never finishes his paintings. Once he understands what's going on, he moves on. So um, this situation here, we've got this as the A wave here. Um, we can have the B wave over here already. And then this will be wave one and two to here. We just come up a little way to the 78.6 here. Uh, so it's be pretty much a dance across the 105. So the 105 as support or resistance. So what we'll be looking for there to see if you know we'll put that at 105 and at 105 if it becomes if it becomes the support then we know that we're more bullish um if it doesn't then we can come down from that point so we either come in around this supply zone and come down um or we push up a bit further up here for that so anyway we'll sort that out in some uh see some detailed work in there but just want you to sort of understand that in one way or another um we need, you know, an A and a B and a C wave here for the B wave. And then we come down um, and uh, or we can put the B wave over here and come down for one, two, three, four, five. So there's two ways of looking at it. But this move up here, we'll see oil go up at this point. Uh, we'll see these 
yields go up, the, 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 the yields here push up higher. While these are pushing up, we're going to see that the TLTs uh, push down here. So these are the bonds here. So an A and a B and a C wave coming down here. This is pretty easy to track at this point. I'm assuming this is wave one here. We looked at this the other day in detail. So I won't go there. One and two and then one, two, three, four, five for the third wave, fourth wave and fifth wave down here. So when this bottoms down here, that means that the yields will top, the dollar will top, yada, 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 and crude oil will top as well and gold will bottom. So the triangle of the dollar, the bonds and the yields will all be sort of working together and they will reflect things like crude and um, and the dollar, I mean the gold and <clears throat> and silver so all, while these while the bonds are coming down we're going to see the gold and all that come down as well so we can have a look at that i'm not going to go into a lot of detail here and there are different ways to count the gold market in the bigger picture i i get it you know um but uh far as uh far as i can see we'll be under pressure coming down and then we need to push up so um we could have this as an ending diagonal and uh, our commodity man has got that going at that point. So we, we understand the implications of, of these things. So that means that this would be, um, let's get me get my drawing tool working. Uh, wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four and wave five finishing in a triangle manner here. <clears throat> so it kind of depends really if you think that um, if you think the stock market is going to be bullish then gold is going to struggle if you're um, one of the Elliott people that think that the stock market is topping then you'll see gold become more bullish it's that sort of thing for me personally I just I, I understand both sides of the market I just stay with the evidence and whatever that is then I act on that and at the end of the day, we're just looking for trade setups. Um, so it's that simple. Um, silver will be the same as well. I'm not certainly not going to go into here as well, but it's in a uh, in a triangle pattern because it's working in lots of threes here, and it still needs a bit messy in here, but it still needs to come down further here. So you know whatever bounces were here that just still needs to come down, as I've mentioned the other day. So. <clears throat> this you know it's probably one two three four five unless it's working in an ABC pattern here with one two three four five still needs to come down do you know what I mean so well the, it's the same old story there's nothing to trade and then there's everything to trade I mean so certainly you can short gold but you, you know you wouldn't want to short it into um, or silver rather you wouldn't want to short it into such a large number here because there'll be buyers sitting at twenty dollars and so on you know you just be very careful how you trade around um, large numbers so that's you know all of these guys here that's pretty much how they're sort of all playing out and then we've got um copper iron ore and uranium uh here so we're going to have a look at those now then we'll look at crude oil and natural gas which is falling out of bed um and crude oil will be pushing up in line with the dollar these kind of guys have got their own here um i mean a lot of this here by the by um we could look at this um, I just want to have a look if you don't mind um, I just want to have a look at the indices here for so I have a look at the Chinese market I know that that's under a lot of pressure I want to find uh, indices indices and then back over to here okay okay definitely something's happening here um, I just want to go to the monthly we've looked at this before but it's quite important to the commodity market because these are the buyers you know um, <clears throat> you know we know that China is in a in a in a bad situation um, at the moment um, but you know I mean the rise of China from the 70s you know all the way up until it's had its peak I kind of just see that as wave one and then you know the COVID and all the rest of it and the tightening and doing all what they've been doing is kind of the wave two thing because it came down really hard and fast you know um, so you know it'll you know now that it's all doom and gloom that's the time to look at to sort of buy this you know to look at to look should be look at the buying side of things you know um, the um, so this here this is the Shanghai uh, the SSE uh, comp so 
we've got a big triangle here on this monthly chart so monthly here so an a b c d and e we've been over this before um from d to e we'll be looking for three waves like c to d was in one two three or a b c rather so we're looking for you know an a and a b and a c wave down here and so we're i think we're pretty close to it but um i'm not seeing i'm seeing volume on this bar coming down here I've seen this bar move up, but it's on lower volume, but it's only, a, you know, it's only the 5th, 14th today. So uh, also uh, Chinese new uh, holiday as well. Um, so let's just see after they come back, they're off for a good few weeks and we'll see when they come back. So as soon as this here gets support back on here, right, on this level here, then um, we can call that in at that point, that way for here of this massive triangle so then china becomes uh interesting at that point so that becomes interesting at this point and then that will come that will come through into um not this one where are we silver over here so this will bring us through to uh copper and iron ore and uranium so china have been developing their own minds you know for uh, around the world uh you know so they're not sort of reliant on brazil australia and canada and so on so we all know parts of that particular story um but some of those mines really haven't sort of come on just yet and so on so this is the copper here and um there's we counted five waves up here so there's half a silly chance we could look at that as five waves for wave one with an a and a b for wave two here that's quite possible um and I, 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 i'm you know bringing it in as being possible because of where iron ore is we'll get to that in a moment but otherwise um we could end up seeing this come down here further before going up you know so we've got a big a wave here coming up here and then an a b and c wave coming down here for the b wave and then going up for a c wave up here for this <clears throat> And this could also work in another three waves here as well. Um, but I think it's sort of okay-ish at this point because the A wave here could also be worked as three waves. So yeah, it's, it, it, you could get a WXY out of this too. But anyway, nothing to do here yet, right? Um, we can see that it's got support coming in here, which is good. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of ways that that could play out. So nothing, but when, when we get that set up, then we can go into for BHP and so on. When we come into um, iron ore here, this is Singapore here and um, the Chinese markets, uh, Chinese futures markets, not much different except that on the on the on the Singapore market here, we've had this nice A, B and C down here. The C wave in Chinese market didn't quite take the low out here. In fact, it was up here somewhere. But here we've got this nice A, B, C. Then we've got one and two here. And then we can look at this moving up here. And I've just counted it as one and two and one and two and three and four. I could look at this also as a more bullish market and this here could also be one and two at this point that's possible um but i'm just staying here i'll just see how this plays out we were looking for an abc we've got that there so this really needs to stay in play here now if it breaks this top here any further than it actually has at the moment or hasn't that's a pretty fine line there but whatever the case may be um anything sort of below that there and then we would need to look at this as one here with an ABC for wave two. But if this came down further, then it's going to come down quite a lot because this would have to be wave one here, two here, three, four and five down here. So that really puts a spanner in the works and we'll have to look at this as some other corrective configuration. But I don't want to go there just yet. I want to just see if this is going to hold up here. Um, so we'll just continue to focus um, on that and then we move over to uranium and with uranium here we're looking at this here let's move up here as wave three so it's starting to move down here uh, into wave four here which we saw the largest one here come down quite strongly 
at this point so we can know that that's sort of on the right track at that point so i won't go into that this is just going to play out across the 30 here within group one so group one is 31 32 and 33 for ura and then group two down here is 28 27 50 and 26 50 here 27 20 rather and 28 so um and we can see that there's good support here so this is just going to be a ball bouncing uh in this particular space here for ages so nothing to do here and then we've got crude oil and with crude oil here the the thing that we need to understand here is that this particular move up here is in three waves so it's corrective so that means some time in the future that this low is going to be taken out the current move up here will be able to tie in with the us dollar and the other markets they'll they'll top and turn on the same as as that but they've got higher to go it does look like we've got a little impulse wave here so it'll be one two three four five moving up there this one here is taking one two three four five six seven eight nine so say 10 20 30 days a month before it gets toppy up there not including we yeah, another month i'll take that extra wave from the corrections there so it's still a way to move up you know still a way to go up there um radio so it becomes a natural gas which um you know is uh is bearish so we're looking at this as wave three here with wave four up here and and then looking down for wave five here and in that wave five we're looking for wave one and two here different tops here the cash market the spot market's different from other markets this is just nymex um, here so um we can view it in this top could be viewed in different ways here we're looking at one two three four five for the third wave we still need the fourth we still need this one here we still need this one here and we still need this and we still need this one here so um you know how far will it actually come down I, I don't really know at this point you know it depends how high wave four bounces and all the rest of it but one would be looking that you know down you know closer to the dollar area eventually based on you know just the proportions and ratios of what we can see here um but take that dollar as a pinch of salt you know one is the strongest number um in regards to the trading level so it's going to be a sticky number sure it could bounce down to 80 or 50 or 60 cents or you know or, or stick to a dollar 30 and or, or you know with group one and group two around that um around that but um definitely needs to go down the next support um will be the dollar 50 of course and we'll get some sort of bounce off that how far that bounce pulls back is yet to be seen but um our commodity man will uh will uh let bounce but we can see this is moving down here and we've got increased volume right so you need increased volume it confirms the price action as a trend a trend uh, does it need increasing volume but if it's got increasing volume you can expect it to go down further if it's got diminishing volume then you know that the sellers are drying up Alrighty, um that's it uh thanks for tuning in cheers